Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his essay, The Social Responsibility of Business is to Increase Its Profits, Milton Friedman argues that the entire discourse about social responsibility is problematic and ultimately bad. He's going to say that it attacks the very foundations of a free society. And before that, he says a few other things. He tells us that it's a rather vague concept that, that isn't well understood. It lacks analytic rigor. He also tells us that it amounts to imposing taxes on employers, customers, and employees. And there's all sorts of reasons why that's a fundamental problem. But then he tells us, and he uses a very interesting metaphor here, that it provides a cloak for actions that would be justified on other grounds. Friedman doesn't say that one should never be, for example, charitable or help anybody out. He just thinks that that's not supposed to be a function of business. So what does he mean by saying that it provides a cloak for actions? It's providing a kind of disguise and we should call things what they actually are. <clears throat> and he, he tells us we could conceive of instances where a corporation might in fact do something that's say good for a community or contribute to a charity. So he gives you an example here. He says, it may be in the long run interest of a corporation that is a major employer in a small community to devote resources to providing amenities to that community or to improving its government. So, you know, sponsoring the, the Little League team or the 4-H thing or creating scholarships or, uh, you know, creating initiatives to uh, beautify the park or clean up the riverbed or improve, as he says, the governmental offices to try to make government fair, more equitable. All of those things could be good for that company. Why? He says, they may make it easier to attract desirable employees. It may reduce the wage bill, lessen losses from pilferage and sabotage, or have other worthwhile effects. It could be good to help pay for, for example, part of a road so that you can get your products out to the marketplace more easily. That all makes sense, Friedman is saying. Another example of this, and this depends quite a bit on how taxes are, are structured, right? He says, it may be given the laws about the deductibility of corporate charitable contributions, the stockholders can contribute more to charities they favor by having the corporation make the gift rather than doing it themselves, since they can in that way contribute an amount that otherwise would have been paid as corporate taxes. So maybe it makes sense if you, you know, have a large corporation and the stockholders want to see malaria wiped out in Africa, maybe the corporation sponsors that or, you know, water for, for people lacking water, inoculations, whatever it happens to be, right? Those are in the company's long-term interests. Those are in the stockholders' long-term interests. It makes sense to do that. So then Friedman says, why then call it social responsibility? Why not just call it what it is, a rational long-term strategy, which is supposed to provide the benefits that you want to provide or produce? He says, there are many, many uh, cases like this where there's a strong temptation to rationalize, that is to explain these actions as an exercise of social responsibility. And he goes on to say, 
in the present climate of opinion with its widespread aversion to capitalism, profits, the soulless corporation, and so on, this is one way for a corporation to generate goodwill as a byproduct of expenditures. And Friedman sees this as essentially duplicitous. You know, why hide what you're doing? Why pretend that you're doing it out of the, just the goodness of your heart and not admit that you're doing it because it, it works out well for you by doing so? And, and Friedman also admits, he says, that I, I don't really have grounds for criticizing this. I, I, it, it, he says it would be inconsistent of me to call on corporate executives to refrain from this hypocritical window dressing because it harms the foundation of a free society, because that would be to call on them to exercise a social responsibility towards that free society. So Friedman himself is attempting to be completely consistent in this. But then he goes on and he says, you know, though, it actually does attack the foundations of a free society to do this, to, to adopt this sort of mindset. Why would that be bad for a free society? He talks about the schizophrenic uh, character of many business people. He says that the use of the cloak of social responsibility and the nonsense spoken in its name by influential and prestigious businessmen, this is problematic, he says. Business people are capable of being far-sighted and clear-headed in matters that are internal to their business. So in their field, they're experts, they, they're objective, they do what they ought to do. But outside their business, they're incredibly short-sighted and muddle-headed uh, in things that are outside, but do affect the possible survival of their business in general. And so he says, we see businesses calling for all sorts of things, wage and price guidelines or controls or income policies. And he says that this short-sightedness is exemplified in speeches by business people on social responsibility. And what it ends up doing is strengthening a mindset that says that pursuit of profits is wicked, immoral, and must be curbed and controlled by external forces. So what are they doing? They're really setting up a coming uh, of government bureaucracy. Because who, who are going to be these external forces? It's not going to be the companies themselves. So he says that um, the external forces will be the iron fist of government bureaucrats. And so this reveals to him what he calls a suicidal impulse on the part of business people. Then he has an interesting set of reflections near the end about what he calls political principles. He says, the political principle that underlies the market mechanism is unanimity. Now, when we talk about something being unanimous, it means that everybody is on the same page. Everybody agrees. And in a business transaction, that has to be the case. If I want to make a contract with you, both of us have to sign it. If, you, if I make you sign it under duress, it's no good. So I have to appeal to you, you have to appeal to me, we have to find some sort of compromise that we're both good with, and then it's unanimous. So he says, in an ideal free market resting on private property, no individual can coerce any other. All cooperation is voluntary. All parties to such cooperation benefit or they need not participate. There's no, there's no uh, social responsibilities in any other sense than the shared values and responsibility of individuals. That's unanimity. Then he says, the political principle that underlies the political mechanism is conformity. The individual must serve a more general social interest whether that be determined by a church or dictator or, or majority, the individual may have a vote, but then once they're overruled, they have to conform. So if I don't want the stadium to be built and I protest outside and I don't want my taxes to go to that, but the majority votes for the new stadium, I'm paying the taxes and that's all there is to it. If the majority of people love having a military spread all over the world and massive bloated defense expenditures that dwarf even the top 15 rivals that we have and most people seem to be cool with it or at least our elected representatives are, I'm stuck with it, right? That's, that's what he's calling conformity. And he's saying that <clears throat> by talking about social responsibilities, business people are actually setting themselves up to be moved from a situation governed by the principle of unanimity to one that's governed by the principle of conformity. So he finishes by saying that, 
Here we go. The doctrine of social responsibility taken seriously would extend the scope of the political mechanism to every human activity. It would replace the market mechanism with a political mechanism. And uh, Friedman is, is sketching out something rather widespread here. He's only talking primarily about businesses, but we could easily imagine this spreading to every other domain of human existence. Um, and so this is why he thinks that there's a fundamental problem with saying that businesses or executives should be following social responsibility. And he argues the real, the real social responsibility is merely to increase its profits, hence the title of the essay. 